Hi everybody, this is Julissa. Thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel. Thank you to everybody who's listening in the podcast. Today is August 3rd, Saturday, 2024. I wanted to come here and make this follow-up video regarding the father uh, from New Jersey who forced his child to run in the treadmill and shortly after that the child passed away. So this dad and his name is Christopher Gregor, 31 year old dad. Um, he forced his six years old um, boy to run in a treadmill and actually making it the treadmill even go faster when the child complained. So this man went to trial and he was just sentenced to 25 years in prison, okay? Let me just read to you this briefly. A New Jersey father who was convicted of aggravated manslaughter and endangering a child in the death of his six-year-old son was sentenced to 25 years in prison uh, Friday, so just yesterday. Christopher Gregor, 31 years old, was captured in a shocking video playing court that showed him forcing his six-year-old boy, Corey Michiolo, to run on the treadmill at high speed like I said, the boy died on May 31st of this year of injuries related to his father's abuse, okay? Surveillance video from March 20th, um, actually, I do apologize, it says that it happened in 2021, I do apologize about that. Surveillance footage from March 20th, 2021 played during Gregor's trial shows Corey repeatedly struggling to stay on top of the moving bell of the treadmill, the boy falls on his face and his back six times. As his father continued to force him back on the treadmill, at one point in the footage, Gregor's dad seems to be biting his son's head. Okay, Cory's mother, Brianna Michiolo, testified at the trial that she filed for emergency custody on March 31st of 2021, just like 10 days after the video, after seeing her son's bruises and learning about the treadmill incident, she told the jury that she was in fear for Corey's life. Mikiola told the jury she took Corey in for multiple medical tests after she grew alarmed about the bruising. But on April 1st, 2021, a doctor who treated her son said he did not find signs of infection or respiratory distress. Corey was released back into his mother's care at about 1 a.m. and text messages uh, from that day revealed in court showed that the dad, uh, Gregor, accusing her kidnapping of, accusing the mother of kidnapping the son because she had missed the 7 p.m. drop off deadline the night before. Mikulo testified that Gregor Call her the following day to inform her that Corey was sick and that he had taken him to the hospital. Surveillance footage from the hospital lab shows Gregor, the father, carrying his son over the shoulder. An emergency room nurse testified in court that Corey had suffered seizures and was pronounced dead later that day. Again, uh, this happened in uh, 2021, Mar uh, May 31st, 2021. He says here, then after that whole incident, the dad was charged with child endangerment in July and child endangerment. And just this past Friday, just yesterday, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison. This dad kept saying, you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything to hurt my, my, my boy. Here's the thing, you guys, about this case that it's really, um, it's really ter uh, terrifying, shocking to know um, that without a surveillance video, this would have never been brought to to the justice of this world, I guess you can say, because God sees all of that. So unless he repents of it, he also is gonna get the justice uh, from the Lord, right? So the, the sad thing about this case, that video of him lifting the, his boy List, lifting his son and putting him back on the treadmill like your father is supposed to be your protector your father is supposed to guide you your father is supposed to like like you come to your father for protection 
to care for you, to defend you from, from people are attacking you. And this dad did the complete opposite. Okay, I know the mom, and you know, I'm not trying to blame anybody here. We all know who is to blame. The mom um, said in court that she said a lot of things in court. She was crying a lot and things like that. And this is what I always say, you know, um, if your your spouse knows who you are, they know the, the type of language you, you, you know, they know your lingo, right? I, I mean, I would assume that if you are married and you have a spouse, obviously, and you have children, all of that, you know what they talk about. You know what they, what triggers them. You know what reference they do. Um, are they always like checking to see what people are eating or if somebody's overweight? What, what are the comments that they say? And what are, you know, because people reveal themselves. When they speak, they reveal who they are. That's why people are like, you, you want to get to know somebody? Uh, shut up and let them speak. Because it will reveal to you who they are. This behavior from the dad in this case, it's just like, even without that video, I'm so, I'm so thankful for that camera footage from that gym. Because without that video, you know, it would have been like, oh yeah, he fell and then, you know, uh, and then he got sick and the, the, the child died. Without that video, like that's such a big proof in what I'm saying about people revealing themselves. I'm very surprised that if this man was able to do that to his own child, I'm sure he at some point, at some point during the marriage, okay, apparently it looks like they were separated or something. Apparently during the whole marriage, he made some comments that probably to her, to the mom, would have been already alarming, okay? Because if somebody's so concerned about their child, and that child didn't look like he was overweight or obese, nothing like that. If, he, if that man was so concerned about his child gaining weight or being over overweight or things like that, I'm sure throughout the, the marriage that he had with the, mo the mother of the child, he made some comments. Like I said, people reveal themselves and, you know, and people, you, they might put a front to other people, right? They might put a front on uh, being nice and likable and things like that and then behind closed doors then they say can you believe that person is this size can you believe so and so is this so it's almost like I'm sure throughout the marriage the mom noticed some type of behavior right some type of behavior like you know this man is, is so obsessive with this topic of you know of overweight and things like that and exercising and it's almost like I know she probably knew a lot more. She knew she knew the temper that he had, because, like I said, you know, if this man was able to do that to his own six-year-old boy, like, where you think he was a kind husband? I don't think so, right? If he was like that to the child, right, and especially a baby boy, because you know, I know. Don't get me wrong. I know. Um, you know, there are great fathers out there. I know that. But when it comes to, like, having a baby boy as your first child, things like that, in a lot of cultures, that's, like, celebrated. There are a lot of men when they get married and they want to start a family, the first thing they want to have is their, their first boy, um, the first, uh, you know, baby boy. And for this man to do that to this child and to be so careless like that, seeing his own child just drop into the floor and things like that and not being you know compassionate and being so cold to the point that this child developed all the bruises and they had seizures and actually and then after that passed passed away and, and it's like wow that's crazy so if he was able to do that you know i'm sure he's a repeat offender he probably got away with this before he probably was abusive to the mom so there's there are behaviors that you probably notice, and I think a lot of you know a lot of the women they want to um, you know they want to hide behind this you know he's not that bad you know they say they always give excuses to men men's behavior like this right um, but you have to you have to speak up and you have to get out because if he that man is abusive to you. 
he will be abusive to his children, regardless of what you might think, right? When people are loose with their hands and they have an abusive behavior, they have a, a verbal uh, abusive style, rest assured they're going to do it to whoever they can get, you know, whoever they have authority under. It could be, they, can, might, they might actually be like that at work too. I mean, I have seen people at work, like supervisors, that you're like, oh my goodness, this man comes here and he just works here. And he's screaming at that young lady, like berating her verbally. And it's like, he goes to some, he, like he has a wife and a family. And this man, like, how do you live like that? I remember one time I used to work at this store and there was this big supervisor. When he began, he wanted, you know, he was just the biggest bully I ever met. He might look all professional. He can have all the experience that he can, you know, pretend like that he accomplished, right? Because, you know, you cannot take away people's experience and nothing like that. But he was the biggest bully I ever met. And I was like, oh my goodness, this man, like he's here in this store for for some hours during the day and he terrorizes everybody and it makes you think wow like and at one point i remember saying well he goes he goes home to a family after he comes here and like screams at everybody he goes home and like if he's so freely and loose and like so freely openly to be a bully to people that are just co-workers just because they're his he's like the supervisor imagine how he is at home like because everybody here could just quit and get another job right but this man because he's over he has authority he thinks he can just do that right and then just go home like like i couldn't understand at one point i'm like i, I don't understand how people live like that He's just gonna go home and be like, you know, like I don't like. It made me wonder, like, wow, that's crazy. That even to us, that we're like basically strangers to this man, he can be so rude and such a bully like that, and then turn around and like clock out basically and just go home and and go to a family. Like if he's like that to us, imagine how he is to his own family. So um, it's so crazy. So this case about. Um, this father who did that to his child is just, it's so sad. It could have, you know, it, it could have been handled so much better if he had it. He, he was like concerned about his child gaining weight, and it, get, gaining weight and things like that. I think in my previous video about this case, I, I also noted that this man, the way he was treating his own child also probably showed um, that some type of abuse happened to him during his childhood because one thing we know about abuser is that usually they abuse because it, it already has been done to them it's not an excuse it's just when abuse any type of abuse enters somebody um, it's usually because it had happened to them right it could be verbal abuse sexual abuse any type of abuse physical abuse usually they they freely do it because they have seen it you know even they have seen it done at their home by a parent or also it has been done to them too so they're so freely to to do it like that right and it's just you know because usually when you hear people who were abusers and they end up in jail like this man right they usually say, oh yeah, my dad was horrible to us growing up, this and the others. Usually create a chain reaction. That's why abuse is so horrible. It, I mean, everything about abuse is just negative. You know, there's nobody's saying anything positive about it. I think it's a, it's a horrible thing. Um, a lot of the times, verbal abuse is probably m most horrible. And people get away with us so many times, so crazy. People are so quick to just open their mouth and with their own words, just probably just bam it on people. People that are creating the image of God and they're so quick to just bam it on people and be so careless, right? 
Um, it's, it's so sad it happens so often. And like I said, people do it so freely. Especially people that have authority, some, some sort of authority over you. They're so quick to do it. And, you know, and even if they don't even have authority, they don't even have to have authority. Just because they see something in you that kind of like makes them feel, feel inferior somehow. Um, they might want to exercise a type of verbal abuse in, into you. Um, I think in this case, uh, with the child and the father in the, uh, forcing the child in the treadmill, nobody really wins here. We have a child um, that's basically was taken away from, from the mom. And like I said, you know, People think that doing things in the dark, doing things behind closed doors is not going to come to light at some point. God is going to expose everything. Thanks be to God for that video. Thanks be to God that that video was released. You know, so it reminded me just now about the uh, Sean Combs. P. Diddy, you know, like when Cassie came out in December and spoke about it. And he basically denied everything in his God. And then, you know, God... Um, the the tape the tape came along of this um, music mogul right a brand entrepreneur guy who walking around like thinking he's so high in life and accomplishing so many dreams and building empires right that's what people always put these celebrities in pedestals and they accomplish so much and they have done so much and they're beating up their girlfriend in a hotel like they're a piece of trash. And not just like beating them once and being, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, my temper got out of me. Doing it repeatedly on purpose, persistently. And they think they're just going to live life alone like nothing happened. Um, it's just people are playing with fire, man. Like God is going to expose everything. God is going to expose everything. It's, it's just so crazy, you guys. So, um, let me know what you guys think, um, about this dad who was sentenced to 25 years for, um, abusing his child, you know, to run in this treadmill and picking him up repeatedly many times, all to the point that this child suffered bruisers the next day and eventually, uh, lost his life to seizures for, after going through that traumatic experience. Um, that his own dad put him through. Let me know what you guys think about this and what you think about the sentence of 25 years in prison for um, for the dad. Also, I wanted to say um, before I finish, guys, thank you so much for following me on Spotify. If you haven't done so, please do. And also, everybody who listens on Apple Podcast, thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much to all the uh the new subscribers here on youtube thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel and thank you so much for listening in the podcast have a good day god bless hi everybody this is julissa i'm here to invite you to my podcast julissa designs and it can be found on anchor apple podcast and spotify you can join me every day as i make episodes of the latest news real life stories and i also share my favorite bible verse hope to see you then god bless everybody this is julissa thank you so much for coming to my youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you want to know more about me you can always visit www.julissadesigns.com have a great day everybody god bless